Hi everybody, welcome to Simply Scuba. Here we have the Atomic Aquatics Subframe Arc Mask. So this is a smart, tough little mask. Um, it's It kind of is a framed mask, but it's done in a very clever way. Reinforced sections with, uh, with metal parts, which is quite cool. Uh, but the main selling point is in that anti-reflective coated lens. Let's take a closer look. Okay, so this is how it's going to arrive at your front door. Um, so it comes in this, uh, this sort of plastic bag with a case on the inside. Um, I'm not too keen on the plastic bag in this modern day and age, but um, hey ho, Atomic Aquatics. Um, so the first of all, it actually has some uh, some quite important information on the top cleaning and care instructions, because this does have a treated lens. So you do want to be a little bit careful with that glass because some, uh, some things might be a little bit too abrasive and you basically you don't want to damage that um, that coating because that's why you bought the arc mask basically um so just run through those really quickly so arc lenses can be cleaned in the same manner as other dive masks with detergent and water toothpaste or any commercial dye, uh, mask cleaner so that's nice to know. Special care to prevent damaging or scratching of the Arc Technology lens coatings. So first of all, never use harsh, abrasive kitchen cleansers such as Comet, Ajax, or Soft Scrub on the lenses. Be gentle with it. Uh, never use Scotch-Brite pads, good heavens no. Uh, steel, wool, oh my god, uh, or other abrasive pads. Yeah. Very, very gentle. Do not use uh, sort of any kind of metal, steel, wool, or anything. Uh, never rub the mask lenses with a sandy towel. So yeah, don't scratch the lenses because there's no unscratch in it, basically. Uh, warning, this product can expose you to BPA bifen... Bisphenol, uh, which is known to be, oh, the state of California caused birth defects and stuff. And yeah, I think a lot of um, products are having to have this, uh, this label on nowadays. Uh, and then just the uh, Atomic Aquatic Mask. So, getting into it, uh, it feels a bit like Christmas. I have to open up this section with sticky tape. Dispose of that plastic bag responsibly. Then you get the case itself. Um, so a pretty traditional plastic case uh, to protect your mask. It's a clamshell design, so it's gonna open up. You've got these two latches on the front to, uh, to get in and out of it. A uh, attachment loop uh, that's mainly for us uh, in shops, but if you wanted to uh, sort of attach something to it, you can do that. Uh, opening it up. And then inside you have your mask. <clears throat> you have this tiny little booklets uh, with just information about arc technology, the anti-reflective coating, um, and uh, and yeah, basically how it works, because it is quite clever, uh, and it does make a bit of a difference to um, to the sort of light quality and the contrast of stuff coming in. Uh, and then you have your mask itself. Uh, oh, you've got a little uh, sort of sticky label. Uh, I don't think it's actually adhesive. No, it's not adhesive. It's just the, uh, the plastic naturally sticking to the glass lens. Uh, so yeah, let's take a closer look at the mask itself. Okay, so the mask itself is a, uh, a very premium mask. Everything about Atomic Aquatics is always done to their highest standards. They're always very nice, very uh, sort of fine finish to it. Taking a look at the front of the mask. Now you probably won't be able to see any effect um, of that anti-reflective coating and that's kind of the point in it. Um, but if you do look at a, a slight angle you can start to see that reflections off the surface and on the on the inside are reduced. Now that has a few benefits to us, the diver. One of them is that it's allowing a greater amount of light transmission to come through. So instead of traditional glass, which actually reflects a certain amount of light, anti-reflective coating actually allows a greater amount of light to come through so that what you see under the water is a greater representation of what's actually underwater. It can give you a higher contrast, so when you're seeing things, they just appear just that little bit sharper. Um, and it also means that you don't get what they call a, uh, a ghost on the inside. So if you're diving along and you turn your head, sometimes you can see your own eye, which can be a little bit weird, disconcerting. Uh, it's gonna help to reduce that as well. So the frame itself, as the name suggests, is a sub frame. So there is a rigid frame on the inside, but it's also over molded by the silicone of the skirt as well. So that helps to reduce the overall volume, but it also makes it really tough. What helps being tough is this section here, this kind of X is a metal section. So 
With a lot of dual lens masks, they can be quite fragile at times. So you drop it and the, the sort of the frame can crack and break. Whereas with this one, much, much stronger again, because it's kind of covered up by the skirt as well makes it stronger. You've got this metal reinforcement, so it's a very, very strong, tough mask uh, that can last for a very long time. Nose pocket, decent sized nose pocket, and uh, and you can access that even if you're wearing clunky gloves. Uh, moving around to the side, so this is, is, if I was just to look at the buckle and the way that it's attached, I would say that this was a frameless mask because it's attached directly onto the skirt, which means that it has a certain amount of movability, a bit of flex. Also means that when it folds down, it folds down virtually flat if you need to store it away somewhere. So it, it just helps instead of having a big rigid section with kind of hinges and mechanisms that can break, you have this natural kind of silicone flex so that your mask trap can sit pretty much wherever you want it to. Buckle itself, um, very easy to use. You just have this one single button at the top. And as you push it, you see this section just hinges up and then a traditional one-way ratchet strap to tighten it up, to loosen it off, push that button, and then that lengthens that strap. So very quick and easy to use, even with uh, gloves again. Moving around to the uh, the back of the strap, traditional strap. So you have these two separate bands and they just cradle the back of your head. So um, yeah, that will hold on to uh, both your head, your hair, or if you're wearing a hood as well, it's gonna grip onto that pretty easily. On the inside of the mask, so you can see around the, uh, the silicone skirt, you have this second internal skirt. So this is a double seal, and it just means instead of a single point of contact on your face, it just makes a very wide sealing surface all the way around your face. So it's kind of spreading the pressure, so it's not gonna dig in too much into your face. Uh, and it's also gonna create an effective seal, trapping the air on the inside and stopping the, uh, the water from from getting in. Just around the nose pocket, if I try and get the, uh, the skirt out of the way so you can see. Just around the nose pocket, it's gonna turn into a single seal, so it's a bit more malleable, and then this can seal against your top lip, um, but otherwise you do have a, a decent amount of, uh, sort of space inside of there. You might be able to see if it has caught the, uh, the light, you get that kind of bluish kind of tint to it. Um, when it's actually on, you don't really see that, everything looks pretty normal, um, but yeah, when the light tends to reflect on it, it's, um, it kind of limits how much is reflected back uh, sort of out of it. So yeah, it's actually letting a lot of light through, which is very, very clever. Right, so to review the subframe arc mask. So reviewing masks, we have four different categories and then a fifth overall. Uh, so we're looking at the field of view, how much you can actually see whilst you're wearing the mask. Then we have comfort because, well, yeah, it's gonna be planted on your face for a fair amount of time. It's important that it's comfortable. Uh, the extras that come with the mask, if any, uh, the cost, because obviously it's important to know how much something costs. And then the overall score. So taking a look at field of view, I've given this five out of five. If I could have given it a higher score, I would have. Uh, this has a very wide field of view, so you can see a lot under the water. If you really do look off to one side of your peripheral vision, you can see the edge of the mask, but it's in no means obtrusive and it's, it's a lot further away. You can see a lot less of it compared to a lot of other masks, trust me. Um, you also have that anti-reflective coating as well, which improves your vision. So yeah, five out of five isn't a very easy score to give it. As far as comfort, Ashong Aquatics, they always use very premium materials, um, well finished, very, very nice. It's very comfortable. Um, this soft silicone skirt is gonna seal against a lot of different face shapes. Um, so yeah, again, five out of five for that. As far as extras go, I've only given it four. Four is a good score, but it, it doesn't have, uh, I mean, some other masks, you'll have them with EVA cases instead of the, uh, the plastic box, uh, the plastic bag. We don't really need that plastic bag, so we could get rid of that. Um, some other masks, they will come with a, a neoprene strap. So to get five out of five, it would have had to have had all those extra things, but four, by all means, isn't a bad score for it. Um, but yeah, some other masks, you do get a few extra bits and bobs. As far as the cost, 
So again, I've given this a, a four just because it's it's where you get into the sort of the serious mask territory. It's not bonkers expensive or anything, uh, and what you get is definitely worth it. Um, but uh, it's more of a, a serious mask. This is more of a proper investment um, when you're really getting into your diving. Um, so yeah, it's 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 on the more expensive end, but it's at the lower end of the expensive range, if that makes sense. You can find a lot cheaper masks, you can find a lot more expensive masks, um, but for what you get, this is kind of sitting in the perfect kind of range. And yeah, if you're really thinking about getting serious into your scuba diving, this is kind of the price range that I would be looking at uh, to investing in a, a good primary mask that you're going to wear for years to come. And then the overall, bringing all those together, it's come out as nine out of 10, uh, which by all means is a fantastic score because it is a fantastic mask. The main selling point, again, is in that anti-reflective coating. I know it's it's quite hard to physically see any kind of difference um, sort of through the video, but actually, yeah, it does make a bit of difference. And when you're under the water and that's all you're experiencing, it is just that little bit better, um, which does make your dive that much better. Um, Everything else on it, the, the buckle is always nice and easy. The strap itself is a nice. The Atomic Aquatics, you can't go far wrong with them. They always make nice equipment. Okay, so that's the Atomic Aquatics Subframe Arc Mask. A really nice twin lens mask. You've got that anti-reflective coating protecting those lenses or allowing a greater amount of light transmission and reducing the, uh, the, the reflections. Very, very clever. Very nice materials on it. It's a fantastic mask. It's definitely worth trying out if you're getting into your diving properly seriously. Uh, yeah, check it out. There's more information on our website, simplyscuba.com. There's gonna be a link down in the description below. Thank you for watching and of course, safe diving. Mm -hmm.